Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you a new type of video slash series, and this is an idea that I've had for such a long time, and it's called Gather and Chat. The basic concept behind this is that I'm gonna be gathering my ephemera, which is something that I do pretty often, obviously, as a mixed media artist. But yeah, gather, gather my ephemera and then just kind of chat with you guys. And I thought it might be fun to just either talk about random topics, um, like I know I just asked some questions to you guys, um, some Q&A questions on Instagram and, and Twitter, and I got some really great questions that I'm definitely saving for that video, but a couple of them I thought I might have fun kind of introducing to the series, where if there's a question that I get pretty often that maybe might take a little bit longer to answer, I thought that I might be able to kind of answer them in videos like this, where I'm kind of going through my ephemera. And speaking of ephemera, the magazines that I'm going through here is a Lush catalog at the moment is what you're watching. I love using the Lush catalogs for ephemera because they have really great textures and colors. Colors. Also in this stash of magazines, I have this Halloween catalog, which is also great. I was waiting till Halloween was over in case I was going to order anything. I also have a Vogue magazine. Fashion magazines are always great for textures and colors of fabric. And then the um, Hollywood Reporters, which is actually kind of my go-to magazine. And you'll see those two at the end. Hollywood Reporter is one of my favorite places to get ephemera because it's a large size magazine to begin with. So the images are really big. A lot of times they have photo shoots with kind of interesting backgrounds, you know, celebrities in fancy dresses as well. They're really good close-ups of fabric and textures. That's an industry magazine that uh, James and I get. I don't even know if where you can purchase it yourself. I have no idea. But anyways, Hollywood Reporter is one of my favorite places to get ephemera. So for this video, I thought that it might be fun to just kind of talk about ephemera in general. Maybe it's just a good way to kind of introduce the Gather and Chat series. And since it's something that I get a lot of questions about, a lot of people ask me about how I gather my ephemera, what I'm looking for, for kind of my system. I know a lot of people have different ways of storing their ephemera. So I just thought that this might be a good video to kind of talk about that. And P.S. This is another great perk of the Gather and Chat video series that I'm hoping to continue here is that you can either be watching the video or you can just kind of, uh, you know, minimize your browser window or whatever it is, or just listen basically since it's just a voiceover. Okay, so let's talk about my ephemera process. Wow, how many times can I say ephemera in this video? My goodness. But hey, that's what we're talking about, right? First of all, when I gather my ephemera, it is separate from when I am making art. So I almost never sit down, I don't ever, um, sit down in my journal and like work in my journal or my sketchbook and then stop to like go through a magazine. So when I'm working in my journal, that is that time. And when I'm cutting out ephemera, that is that time. So it is a separate sort of process and kind of ritual almost for me than when I am making art. So it's very different. And I do that because I often find that if I am working, I don't want to mess up my flow. I don't want to be, you know, in the midst of painting something and then realizing I need a, a piece of ephemera and then stopping to go through a magazine. That's just really not productive. And it, again, it kind of interrupts that creative flow. Continuing on with that kind of idea of the flow and not interrupting things, I also kind of, and you'll see this kind of off to the side where I have my little pile going, um, I always cut my ephemera into little squares or kind of just like patches almost in a way. Um, and then from there, I organize them into sizes. So I have three little containers in my studio that I have my smallest size, my medium size, and then larger sizes. And they're small little containers. They're like strawberry baskets. And as soon as those strawberry baskets get full, I purge the ephemera. In fact, I think some of you actually have seen this on an old vlog, I did this. Um, if I can find it, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Um, but when it gets full, I just dump that ephemera because there's no use in holding onto it if it's not being used, right? There's no piece of a magazine, you know, cutout that is that sacred that I can't just throw it away. Again, especially if it's just taking up space where I could be gathering new bits of ephemera. So not only are my ephemera in pieces or just like kind of simple squares that I can just kind of apply in. But you'll notice a big part of the materials that I use is that it's not like image specific. So you don't see me going in and like cutting around someone's face or an object, kind of having a, you know, a specific die cut image that I'm using and then putting into my journal. And there's a couple of reasons why I do that. First of all, is that for me, I get really inspired using ephemera just based on colors and textures. So it's finding colors that maybe I don't have in a bottle of paint, finding a pattern or a texture that I wouldn't be able to create or recreate myself. 
Another way that I approach my ephemera too is just kind of using it as like a springboard. It's oftentimes the springboard of determining the colors that I'm using or what other kind of visual elements that I want to integrate or create or continue on. Um, some of you, if you've taken any of my online classes, you've definitely seen me kind of utilize this technique kind of directly. Um, so it's really important to me to have images that are really just focused on color and pattern. Another big component too, just obviously this is hashtag mixed media problems, is that I don't want to have to have images that I can't really super alter. So anything that I am cutting out or using, it's things that I know that I will really be able to alter or change, whether that's through paint or something that I'm drawing on top of, or I cut it up so much that it's no longer a recognizable image. That's really, really important. That's important for me not only just in my mixed media art journaling process is that I really like people to look at my work and not be able to tell what was you know what was pre-existing in the book what did I add in what did I paint I like that kind of mystery element to it the other part of this too obviously is just being a full-time artist and specifically working in mixed media art if I reproduce or sell my work I don't want the imagery to be an issue so naturally I'm not going to be using specific photos of people or objects or these recognizable things that then I am reproducing so that's very, very important, I think, in mixed media is, again, to have these more kind of abstract pieces and colors and patterns that you're able to really cut down and integrate into your work and layer in um, and then just kind of make it your own. You know, I think that that's important is finding ephemera that inspires you and that you can also really just kind of turn into your own. And I think one last little final tip that I will throw in in regards to my ephemera process is that I'm also never looking for anything specific. So when I'm going through magazines, again, I'm drawn to texture and colors and patterns. I'm never cutting things out and saying, this is gonna be perfect for this project or perfect for this spread because then you're putting these kind of constraints on yourself and I never wanna do that. So this process of gathering really has to be loose and just kind of cutting out things that are catching my eye. And then I have this really great assortment of things sort of here at the end. So this concludes our first episode of Gather and Chat. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this video and maybe what you'd like to hear me talk about in an upcoming episode. Um, again, I might use some of your questions that you sent in for the Q&A video. There are definitely a few that are longer that I'd love to answer in a future Gather and Chat episode, but I thought this might be a fun kind of new thing to bring to the channel. Thanks for watching.